It's late. I've been up all night, and I've been tirelessly conducting experiments in 21 kilotons science lab, once and for all, proving that crushing up and snorting caffeine pills is a really, really bad idea. Then whilst I was minding my own business, trying to find some nice pictures to look at, whilst googling terms like filth and shame, I was quickly directed towards this year's Video Game Awards. And seeing as they are imminent, I came up with a very, very poorly considered plan. I found myself once again gawking in shock at the yearly industry circle jerk, where video game big money rewards the servility of mainstream gaming media and vice versa. In a lavish ceremony which largely ignores players' preferences, because as everyone knows these days, gamers are the prey. It's publishers who are the predators. So I thought I would take a quick break from finishing my bitter and vitriolic analysis of Battlefield 2076 to make a quickfire first impressions about my initial thoughts on the Video Game Awards 2021. For those of you who don't know how the Game Awards work, it's basically like how democracy works in China, Russia, or some shithole failed state with the word Stan at the end of its name. It's basically all rigged. There is an illusion of democracy, but really it's just power brokers sitting in a room deciding how they will share out the prizes amongst themselves and their loyal co-conspirators. No, seriously, it's more bent than having politicians self-regulate corruption investigations. They refer to the system as blended voting, which is a euphemism for bent voting. The self-elected industry judges, well their votes count for 90% of the decisions, and the millions of players that vote, well their votes only count for 10% of the total tally. It's rigged! Basically if every fucking player on the planet voted for Valheim, only 11% of the judges would have to vote for some other game and Valheim would still lose. And besides, the Video Game Awards get to decide who gets nominated, so we, the humble customers who incidentally bankroll this entire corrupt shitfest, don't even get to choose who we vote for. It's a multiple choice test, where usually all of the answers are slightly wrong. That's why nearly every year these guys give awards to piles of fuck like The Last of Us 2, and when the player's voice takes place, we all vote for something completely different, like Ghost of Tsushima. In fact, given there is no accountability or vote checking, it wouldn't surprise me if they started rigging player choice too, so that the judges decide who gets to win that category as well. My personal theory is that the awards have very little to do with the merits of the games, and vastly more to do with money, internal politics, marketing, and power within the industry. So I thought, why not try and predict who is going to win by ignoring if the games are any fucking good? Because most of these games I've never even played. But instead, try and assess who will win based on corruption and video game industry politics and bullshit. So buckle up, Cupcake. This is going to be fast, dark, and messy. Disclaimer. This video was made against the clock and through the night. There will be mistakes, factual errors, poor editing, and some stuff that doesn't make sense. It's going to be like all my other videos, basically, only slightly worse. Please feel free to point out any corrections in the comment section. Preferably in sentences that are not too badly riddled with profanity, because YouTube seems hell-bent on censoring the fuck out of the comment section at the moment. Welcome to the Game Awards 2021. It's basically the human centipede of the video game industry, where publishers, mainstream video game journalists and advertisers all coil up together into an aurora bus of defecatory corruption and mutual gratification. The Nominations 
Game of the Year 2021. Really? Because that list looks like Deathloop and five carefully chosen runners-up. Where's Valheim? Deep Rock Galactic. Both far superior games. Deathloop wasn't shit, but this is like one of those corrupt job interviews where someone wants to hire their semi-functional cousin, so they give interviews to Cousin Bill and a group of slightly unqualified idiots just to hide the obvious appearances of nepotism. Look, I'm not blind to the historical context. We are at peak wokeness. People are burning down urban cores, looting all the shops, murder rates have doubled, and the police are quitting all over America. And meanwhile, the incumbent politicians are referring to it all as activism, as fiery but mostly peaceful protests. Now, as much as I'm tempted to go and demonstrate myself a free widescreen TV and some jewellery from the local shops in the name of making the world a more equitable place, I'm not convinced that this is all really about what it's about. I mean, China is bribing half of these politicians, funding research into critical race theory, and most likely covertly funding and training half of these insurgent activist groups. And given how the entertainment industry is perfectly happy to throw in with China too, why wouldn't they just shrug, pretend to be woke, and go along for the ride in the interests of marketing strategy? Because remember kids, this award ceremony is not about video games, it's about the video game publishers, and market share, and marketing. But let's be honest with ourselves, Deathloop is going to win nearly everything this year. Because activism. It's a black exploitation game released in 2021, it's slightly above average, and made lots of noises about representation in the marketing interviews. It's the no-brainer choice for this industry, at this time. So they can point at the award ceremony and say, look, we're not a bunch of psychopathic, amoral, greedy, racist predators, we care about social justice whilst their minimum wage serving staff bring them more champagne. Valheim should have won, but Deathloop will most likely be game of the year. Best Game Direction Deathloop will win, obviously, for all the reasons stated above. Best Narrative Deathloop Best Art Direction Deathloop Best Score and Music Deathloop Best audio design, Deathloop. Best performance, Jason Kelly. Because he was in Deathloop. Actually, no. Ozioma Akaga, because Deathloop. Plus, she's a strong female protagonist. I guess there is a slim chance that Giancarlo Esposito might win, based purely on the fact that he clearly was one of the best video game performances of 2021, delivered long and brilliantly performed mocap cinematic scenes with lots of dialogue and grade A acting. But sadly these are not awards about who was best, this is about which winner services a marketing agenda. Besides, people are still protesting about Ubisoft being a bunch of date drugging predators and professional chokers, so there is that. So I'm going to say Ozioma Akaga, because it looks nicer on shareholder publicity. In summary, out of the first seven categories, Deathloop is nominated for every single last fucking one. That should be a clue, especially since it's an interesting yet mediocre game. It's not a bad game, and I enjoyed it well enough despite the fact it ran like shit, but it ain't no game of the year. Even in 2021. Personally, I reckon they'll probably massage the figures a little to make it look less of a Last of Us 2 stitch-up job, and give maybe 6 out of 7 awards to Deathloop. Maybe they'll give something like Best Music to Near Replicant as an act of charity. Maybe not. Possibly Psychonauts 2 or Ratchet and Crank will win something because they seem heavily overrepresented in nominations too. But mark my fucking words, Deathloop is this year's Last of Us 2, 
and will be going home with a lot of awards this year. Because marketing. Games for Impact What does that even mean? I'm pretty sure Cyberpunk 2077 made a phenomenal impact, but possibly not for the right reasons. And it's not even on the list. Look, I haven't played any of these games, so I'm more clueless than a DICE studio manager. So it will be whichever one has the most activism in it. If I'm forced to take a punt, maybe it will be Life is Strange True Colours. Yeah, that'll do it. It's got a picture of a girl with rainbow colours behind her. Good enough. Best ongoing video game. Well, I was going to say Warzone would win, but on reflection, Warzone is Activision, and they are mired in a shit heap of abuse allegations, staff walkouts, and Bobby Kotick apparently let slip that he can have staff members whacked out on demand. Then again, he does look like the sort of person with access to private hitmen, and he certainly has the psychological profile of someone who would use them. Allegedly. So no, Warzone will most likely get snubbed. Probably for Apex Legends or Final Fantasy. Whichever one is stealing the most players away from Activision games. Final Fantasy XIV it is then. Because that is shafting the World of Warcraft player base right now. Best Indie Game Well, this is interesting. Because I've played a few good indie games this year and I never even heard of these games before these nominations. There was a time when I thought the indie category was a good thing. I naively thought it was a noble attempt by the mighty AAA publishing powerhouses to acknowledge the efforts of the little struggling indie shithouses. Obviously this assessment only makes sense based on the assumption that AAA games are the best in the industry and indie games are the worst. However, this is not the case these days. In fact, in 2021, most of the good games I have played have been independent, and most of the AAA games have been so shitty that if you tried to sell the game discs as novelty drinks coasters, kids would be coming up to the counter and asking, have you got any of these with cool bad games on them? So yeah, I think the indie categories are just a way to sideline developers and publishers who don't yet have the big bucks to sit at the grown-ups table and start paying off major news outlets. It's a way to pat them on the bum, or head, and maybe increase their value a bit before they're acquired by Microsoft, EA, or most likely, Tencent. Valheim was made by a couple of guys in a room, sold 8 million copies and is one of the most highly rated games on Steam, so obviously, they ain't even nominated for Best Indie Game of the Year. Just being the indie phenomenon of the decade just isn't good enough these days. Similarly, Chernobylite and Medieval Dynasty don't even get a look in. Look, if Valheim isn't even nominated for Best Indie Game of 2021, that is cast iron proof that these awards are a complete joke. A sick, unrepresentative, out of touch joke. So even though I don't have a clue about the other games that have been nominated, I am gonna say 12 minutes will win. Because that game stars James McAvoy, Daisy Whitley, and Willem Dafoe and having one of those fuckers on the podium collecting the award will be good optics. Especially if it's that Mary Sue Jedi. Best mobile game. Now that is an interesting phrase. Best mobile game. That's like friendliest raper or kiddie fiddler who gave you the most sweets. I hate mobile games with a passion. They are almost exclusively designed with the express purpose and sole intent of parting you from your money. Sadly, are responsible for sucking many talented developers out of the proper video game industry and are now using algorithms to identify whether the user is drunk or intoxicated in order to target them with microtransactions. Pretty sure that's technically illegal. Allegedly. 
They are the video game equivalent of a parasitic rectal worm. But the winner will most likely be Genshin Impact, because they are a Chinese publisher based in Shanghai. So the People's Republic of China probably paid off a few judges to win so they can get their spyware on more phones before they invade the South China Seas and trigger a global communications blackout in the West by hacking everyone's smartphone. Best Community Support Ah, oh, Best Community Support The consolation prize of the video game industry. This is a ludicrous award because it's in entirely unverifiable by its very nature. Most of the time community managers are just deleting comments off of Reddit, banning players from forums or Discord for making legitimate complaints, or fluffing off shill content creators and doing backdoor promotional deals with them. There you go son, there's a Funker Pop and 500 quid, now tell everybody our game doesn't suck. Community support? What metrics are you going to use to judge that? Count up however many players they banned? Or how many times they bullshitted players on Twitter? Do they send out an army of undercover investigators to pretend to be players and raise support tickets and see how it pans out? Do they monitor the forums and Reddit, both of which publishers control and censor into oblivion? Do they conduct longitudinal studies on player contentment and then publish them in the American Journal of Fucking Psychology. I fucking doubt it. I would postulate that they do the following. They make this shit up. This award is a joke and is probably used as a little thank you for something somebody did once or to boost share price or some shit. My best guess is that they might give it to Final Fantasy XIV just to piss off Bobby Hitman Kotick. Innovation in accessibility. Well, I'm always joking about the fact Ubisoft's games are so shite these days, they go full ham on accessibility because it's the only award they're ever going to get fucking nominated for. So I guess I'm obliged to put my money where my mouth is and say Far Cry 6 will win this category. Besides, if Ubisoft has one talent, it's their ability to add accessibility and functionality to their games so that a wide spectrum of players with a huge range of disabilities and challenges can all have equal access to having a really shit time. Best Virtual Reality Slash Augmented Reality I like puking up falling over and smashing my face on the living room table as much as the next red-blooded male. Or lady gamer. I'm not pukist. All puke is equally welcome here. However, I don't know VR or AR games at all. I will however take a wild punt on Sniper Elite VR, based solely on the fact that Sniper Elite seems like the sort of VR game where you puke up the least. Based on my personal experiences of previous games in the franchise, I doubt you will even need to take too many travel sickness pills to play that game. Best Action Game If you don't know that Deathloop is going to win this award, you have clearly not been keeping up with the rest of the class. So stop sitting at the back of the room, picking your nose and wanking, and pay attention for a few minutes. Deathloop will win nearly all its nominations because activism in video games. Everything else is just details and background noise. Best action slash adventure game. Not even sure what the difference is between this category and the last one. They say it's something to do with puzzles, but that makes no sense when you look at the nominations in both categories. I guess there was some other publisher they wanted to tug off because it is kind of odd that Deathloop isn't even on the list of nominations and it does indeed appear to be an action adventure game too. It says so right there on Steam. So it must be true. Besides, Deathloop is full of fucking puzzles. I mean, it is basically a giant fucking time puzzle that you have to solve, right? 
Deathloop being conspicuously missing from this category, therefore means some other publisher is getting tugged off for some reason. No clue who will win this. Maybe Guardians of the Galaxy? Because Square Enix usually ponies up enough cash to win at least one award. Probably. Best Role Playing Game of the Year I really don't know what to make of this award to be honest. I mean, there was a huge uproar when Cyberpunk 2077 launched and utterly failed to live up to the fan expectations regarding its role playing features, or lack thereof. So basically giving it to them would be a cause for much mirth and hilarity in every video game tavern across the land. I enjoyed Cyberpunk 2077 despite its flaws, but Christ, if you walked into a pub and started claiming it's got extensive role playing mechanics, everyone would just start laughing at you. Look, I haven't played the other games so I'm in the dark here, but there are all sorts of rumours that CD Projekt or CD Projekt Red or CDPR, I don't know what to call them, whatever I say somebody complains, but there are rumours that those lovely serial bullshitting Polish fellas only launched Cyberpunk 2077 in such a shit state in order to quickly raise revenue for some kind of impending sale or purchase. Nobody really knows what's going on with them, but something weird is cooking up. Cyberpunk 2077 is on the list, that is strange in and of itself. Maybe it's a token nomination, but I'm going to take a wild punt on it. Cyberpunk 2077 it is, and there will be much pointing, merriment and laughing at the judges if they actually win. Seriously though, if Cyberpunk wins best RPG it will be fucking hilarious. Best fighting game Fighting games are a bit like BDSM. If it's not something that you actively engage in, it's kind of pointless wasting your time having an opinion about it. I don't play fighting games, therefore I have no opinions on the matter. As for BDSM, while well, I usually get hit enough on my way out of a brothel, I'm not going to pay to take another beating whilst I'm actually in there. I suppose I have to choose one and I'm fucked if I'm voting for Spongebob Squarepants. So it's the one with the girl in the picture. Melty blood. There you go. It's going to be the one with Spongebob Squarepants in it. I've got this weird feeling. Best Family Game Fuck knows on all fronts, comprehensively. Look, personally I think all games should be rated as 18 plus with extreme swearing, violence, gore and graphic scenes of human suffering and dismemberment. So whichever one has the most of that in it. Actually, maybe that Pokemon game will get my sympathy vote. I thought Pokemon Go was hilarious. Kids were always wandering off, getting lost, kidnapped, falling down manhole covers. There should be more of that in video games. Everyone loves that shit. Best Sim Slash Strategy Game for me this category is all the evidence I need to prove that the video game industry no longer gives a shit about any game that requires even half a brain cell to play. They can't even be bothered to have separate categories for simulators and strategy games. They have five different categories to cover esports, but only one category to cover the entirety of simulators, strategy games and turn based strategy. Imagine going to a fucking car show where they have five different categories to cover electric solar powered bicycles, but there's only one category covering all cars powered by petrol. I like petrol. Since when has a flight sim been a RTS tank game? Since when has Surgeon Simulator been like Starcraft? Since when has Wasteland 3 been categorised with Farming Simulator? What were they thinking here? Oh, let's just lump all this nerdy stuff into one box and be done with it. This is like having pornos and kids cartoons in the same category on Netflix. I'm not objecting on principle, I just think it doesn't make sense. And I'm strictly referring to Netflix there. 
most likely the winner will be Age of Empires 4 or Flight Simulator, because Microsoft. Seriously, they're both games published by Xbox Studios. They are rich. They need to win something this year after all. Fuck knows they paid enough money to the judges. They probably are the judges. Besides, Bill Gates still owns a nominal share in Microsoft and he's still highly influential. And since our Bill now owns vast amounts of farmland in the US, it's probably a good idea to stay in his good books. Because if you want to eat after the global economic collapse, he'll probably be making all of the food. Best Sports Racing Game Oh god, it's hard to be fucked at this point. But that's two EA Sports games and Ubisoft's Riders Republic. That is a lot of shite to be stuffed into one category. So it will be one of the other two. Probably Forza Horizon 5. Because Microsoft. Best Multiplayer Game Well obviously Valheim should win if there was any justice in the world. But there isn't. It's also quite conspicuous that Amazon's New World is even on the list. Now don't get me wrong, I quite liked New World. I liked pootling around with my little axe chopping down the environment. I liked pootling around killing pigs. I liked pootling around picking herbs and berries. I loved pootling around doing fishing. It's a great game for low effort drunk pootling gameplay. But best multiplayer game? Fuck no. As much as I enjoyed the extensive and well thought out pootling mechanics in New World, there is no escaping the fact that New World launched in a semi balked state. Endgame was basically broken or missing, and because most of your data was held client side, PvP was broken too. When you can make your character immortal by opening your game in a window and using your mouse to jiggle that window around on your screen, that is a sure and certain sign that your game engine is absolutely not up to snuff. Well they ain't going to change the game engine now, so New World will likely never be fully repaired. Still, it's on the nomination list for some strange reason, and Amazon has enough money thanks to lockdown mandates that they could probably hire a private army big enough to invade fucking Cuba. So launching a military attack on the Microsoft Theatre in Los Angeles, California would be trivial by comparison. So yes, Amazon's New World might well win this category, despite the outrage this award will cause. Money and power talk. And Jeff Bezos has rockets. Content Creator of the Year Oh dear lord. Look, I don't have the time to do in-depth research into these guys to figure out who has been doing what deals with which corporate clients. Their commercial affiliations remain unknown to me. So I will merely say this. My personal favourite Content Creator of the Year within the parameters of this Circle Jerk shitfest would be Pooty Shoe from the TV series Mythic Quest. This guy might be an obnoxious little fictional shit from a TV comedy show about the video game industry, but he is probably a more honest representation of streamers in the current commercial environment, and probably has more integrity too. And he doesn't have that much integrity. But if I was forced to take a blind choice from the nomination set out in front of me, I would say Fusely will win. Because feminism. Best Debut Indie And now we're getting right to the heart of the Corruption in the Industry Awards. Valheim, the phenomenal video game success of the year, has been relegated to a subsection of the Indie Awards. Think about this. One of the most high profile beloved runaway successes of the year, with the third highest Steam rating on Steam this year. It has millions of adoring fans, 8 million players. It's one of the biggest indie phenomenons in a decade. In fact, the only negative thing I can say about it is that they nerfed terraforming mechanics, which totally fucked up several of my builds. 
but I will do my best to ball that anger up into a tight fucking knot and push it down deep inside of me. My point is that Valheim by all rights would be a no-brainer for best game of the year, but didn't even get nominated. It would wipe the floor as best indie game of the year, but didn't even get nominated. Instead, it gets nominated for this third place bullshit participation medal of an award, just to try and cover up how much of a total sham these awards truly are. Now I couldn't even find this category in last year's awards. The year before that, there was no best indie game award, but strangely there was a fresh indie game award. 2018 was the last time they had this category. So basically the indie award category is a mutable, flexible award that they tamper with in order to give it to specific games by changing the definition and the rules to qualify. In essence, it's a way to give a booby prize to an indie game that whilst being immensely good, isn't worth wasting a grown up award on because they are outside the cabal of the AAA publishers and the general video game publisher mainstream media industrial complex. So yeah, I reckon this sub award will go to the awesome Valheim as a consolation prize. There you go, here's a £5 voucher for Millets and a two week off season holiday at fucking Butlins. Come back when you've got an advertising budget and you're about to float on the stock market. Although I would say as a footnote, we can't rule out that they will give the award to Sable because I saw a bunch of crushingly woke hipster shills pouring all over that game. And the character has a pink spaceship. Read into that what you will. Most anticipated game. Oh, this award was sponsored by Amazon. Oh my, I guess New World will be winning the best multiplayer game award after all. Well, I suppose I should say God of War Ragnarok will win because people generally take God of War far too seriously. It's a good enough game, but come on. The fangirling combined with the shit ton of money Sony Interactive Entertainment threw at the content creators, combined with the free holidays in Norway, resulted in God of War getting the most obsequious, servile and gushing reviews I've ever seen in a review cycle. Seriously. Reviewers embarrass themselves by saying all kinds of stupid shit. Such as Describing solving puzzles as revolutionary. Describing climbing up walls as innovation. And generally coming in their pants because they got a free holiday and a brown paper bag full of cash to hype a AAA game that wasn't entirely shit. I'm sure there is as much money, and for that matter, servility, floating around for the next round of God of War who can stick their tongue the farthest up Cory Barlog's asshole. And trust me, that competition is going to be fierce, because even if YouTubers get there early, there will probably be three or four heads wedged up there already. Look, most anticipated game is basically a pay to win award to boost your pre-launch marketing and build hype. So for a fact, it will be going to a game with a big advertising budget. That's fucking science. That said, I'm going to go against my better judgement and not say God of War Ragnarok. Instead, I'm giving it to Starfield. Why? Well, for a start, Bethesda is now owned by Microsoft. And whilst I happen to be a big fan of the Xbox Game Pass, and I admit to having fantasies about sniffing Sarah Bond's hair. I said hair. The real factor for me is that I think the whole world is waiting to see Todd, my mummy won't let me wear my leather jacket on stage anymore, Howard, royally fuck up Starfield by overhyping it, lying about it, launching a typical Bethesda buggy mess, then pulling his best sad face on Twitter and saying, Sorry. Let's face it, everyone is waiting to watch Starfield fall flat on its ass. It will be spectacular. It will be like Star Citizen, only the train wreck will happen at a much more respectable pace, and 
it will be slightly less expensive to buy a ticket. Best Esports Game I would struggle to fully explain the full extent of how I have no fucks to give when it comes to esports. The closest I ever get to real sport is watching female athletes compete on YouTube whilst making polite conversation with the gentlemen of culture in the comment section. But esports? Really? If I wanted to watch a bunch of teenage boys playing with each other, I'd install a load of hidden cameras in the motel rooms around Hollywood. But I don't. Besides, the very notion of taking a child prodigy out of school and getting them to take Adderall and train for 20 hours a day on something other than astrophysics or developing faster than light travel may well end up being responsible for humanity never getting off this shithole planet. But even though I know nothing about esports, I do know a bit about the People's Republic of Winnie the Pooh. And I want to get as many shots in before World War 3 starts. So here goes. The winner will be either League of Legends or Valorant. Why? Because they're both made by Riot Games. And Riot Games are now wholly owned by Tencent, a Chinese mega corporation. Although credit where credit is due, at least Tencent wasn't stupid enough to openly sponsor anything during the awards. They know that bribes should be passed under the table. Best Esports Athlete <laughs> Athlete <laughs> Athlete <laughs> Oh fuck off Best Esports Team Whole esports teams are busted for cheating in competitions. In fact, the cheating is so rife the internet is full of stories about it. If esports can't even make the game cheat proof at tournaments, what hope have the rest of us peons got to play an online game without dealing with cheats regularly? Besides, every time high profile players cheat, they turn into walking adverts for the normalisation of cheating in online video games. I'm sorry but fuck the lot of them. They are no use to me or the average gamer. They are marketing vehicles, nothing more. And a bad advertisement at that. Best esports coach. I don't care. Whichever beats his team the most. If any of those coaches own a riding crop, taser, whip or truncheon, they get my vote. Best esports event. Jesus, does this shit never stop? Look, the only esports event I'd ever be interested in is if they chucked whole esports teams into a pit with a selection of swords and weapons, and the last one left alive won a fucking mouse mat. Until then, I'm not interested. This all lays out the full extent of the industry bullshit in all its kaleidoscopic glory. Five awards categories for shitting esports and only two categories for indie games. It's all about priorities, folks. And these priorities are crystal clear. Esports is a marketing wing of publishers. Therefore, esports is more important than the actual video games. What an absolute fuckfest of an award ceremony. Look, I made all of these choices based on the industry, not the games themselves. I made my choices based on the assumption that the awards are an industry circle jerk of corruption, nepotism and backslapping. I chose the winners according to the premise that these awards are a pay to win competition. So frankly, if I only get 20% of my guesses right, that's still a pretty damning metric for how dysfunctional these awards are. Maybe I'm wrong about all of this. Maybe I'm just a tiny, weeny little bit cynical. Maybe this video will age terribly, but I for one will be playing shill bingo on the day just to see how far this industry is prepared to prostrate itself at the altar of activism while the cities of North America collapse into a dystopian Mad Max style hellscape just so that they can wring those last few extra dollars out of the industry before a couple of well-placed Soviet and Chinese EMP strikes takes the internet offline forever consigning video games, and more importantly, pornography, to the annals of history. Unless of course you own a large stash of physical sweat mags.
like I do. Just remember that this is 2021 we're talking about. Possibly the worst year for wokeness, civil unrest and video games. So whatever happens at the awards, it will no doubt make no sense at all in terms of video games. All we can say with confidence is this. There will be much posturing, virtue signalling and appealing to social justice. Ultimately, all the award winners will be dictated by money. And even if Valheim wins best debut indie game, it will still not receive the credit that it truly deserves. I would also note it's probably going to be a bad year for Japanese video game companies full stop, whatever happens. Because China. China has its fingers in nearly every publisher now, and they don't like Japan very much. Just saying. One saddening point regarding the awards is the Player's Voice Award. It is falsely alleged that this is an opportunity for the players to be heard, and it's 100% driven by the players. Well, that is a crock of shite. We can only choose from the games pre-selected by the award ceremony. We have to vote in rounds, we can see what other people have voted for, so there's tactical voting, we have no proof they're honest about the numbers, and they even included voting for Halo Infinite, which wasn't even released at the time the polls opened. Vote rigging much? Here are the authorities' sanctioned, state-mandated video games that they have deigned we are allowed to vote for. And yes, Valheim isn't even on the list, because it would most likely win, and that would be incredibly embarrassing. So we don't get to vote for our favourite games, we get to pick the least abhorrent game from their list of preferred candidates. Like I said, it's like a Chinese election. Maybe I will be wrong about all these awards. Maybe this video says more about my views on the video game industry than it does about this ceremony. Oh well, I certainly feel a lot better for having gotten it all off my chest. Plus. The award ceremony will be so boring, most people won't even watch it anyway. So there is that. Right, I need to get back to the important business of shredding Battlefield 2042 before my Patreon supporters start sending me cat shit through the mail. Again. Besides, frankly, after dealing with these awards, playing Battlefield 2042 might actually feel like fun by comparison. <laughs> Just kidding. 2042 is not fun. It's a shit pie. But you knew that. But for now, good luck and happy hunting.